Okay. Okay, what else? What else you got, brother? So you're halfway through this one? What's the scoop with this one? This is, again, equation of a line and systems of equations. Is that, uh, yeah, go to it. Was that number five? Yeah. Okay, so take a look at this. Here, let me erase this. Um, so what we got... So take a look at this. Now that we know what an equation of a line is, right? Okay. So here's this, here's this. Here's a line, right? Let's call this equation line one. And let's say this is y1 is equal to mx plus b. Let's call this m1 and b1 and y x1, right? It's just, and subscripts in mathematics is like a last name. It's distinguishing this Y from another Y we might be talking about, right? So let's say we had this line that represents some type of relationship, right? If we draw another line, let's say here's another line, right? Let's call this line two. And because this is line two, the Y and the X's and the M's and the B's, they're different, right? Because this is the relationship as compared to that. The only place they have the same X and M, uh, same X and Y is here, right? So we're going to call this Y2 is equal to M2 X2 plus B2. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's important to us is... To find out when does this line cross this line and they cross here right agree okay this point it's a point it has an X and a Y agree now because this point exists both on this line and on this line this is the only location where x1 and y1 are the same thing as x2 and y2, right? They have the same values. So this could be x1 and y1 or x2 and y2. Oops, y2, which means they're both x and y. They're both the same, agreed? Are you okay with this so far? Yeah, so... so how do you find out where these two lines cross? How do you find out what this point is? The way you find out, you manually force y1 to be equal to y2. Because at this point, y1 is y2, is it not? Yeah. Okay, so if y1 is equal to y2, at this point then all we have to do to find out what they are what x and y are we're just going to set y1 equal to y2 so set y1 equal to y2 you okay with that yeah. so what that means is we're going to set this because that's y1 equal to this which is y2 does that make sense yeah. so we're going to go M1, X1 plus B1 is equal to M2, X2 plus B2. Okay so far? Now, if you know what this line is, then what information do we know from this equation that explains this line? What are the two things we need to know to know what an equation of a line is? The M and the B, right? If we know the M and the B for a line, we know how that line behaves. Should we do an example? Okay, take a look at this. Let's do this in pink. Hopefully the pink comes out. Okay, yep. So take a look at this. What if I said graph the following line? Y is equal to negative three X plus 
5. Okay. How do we graph this line? Uh, we just want to graph it. We're not trying to solve for anything. So if whenever you're trying to graph a line, y is equal to mx plus b, you go to the b, you go to the y-intercept, and then from that point, you do what the m tells you to do. So whenever you're trying to graph a line, so you go up five. no, no, well, yeah, on the y-axis, right? So you go to the y-intercept, to the y-axis and you go up five let's say this is one two three four five that's your y-intercept for this line and from here you do what the slope tells you to do what is the slope telling you to do so what does that mean if the slope is negative three what's 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 the definition of a slope is rise over run right so you always have to think about it as a fraction right so if it's rise how do you write negative 3 as a fraction how do you no negative 3 over negative 3 is 1 how, 1 right so any number can we put over 1 right so the slope m is negative 3 over 1. Agreed? So to graph a line, you go to the y-intercept, which is 5, right? Here's 5. And then from the y-intercept, you do the slope, negative 3 over 1. So you go down 3, rise is negative. And I always use the negative with the rise, up and down, right? 1, 2, 3, down, and 1 over. And the bottom will always be to the right if you use the negative just for the this so one over let's assume that's one so this line is this you just graph that line right okay it's got for you for any line all you need to be able to graph a line is the m is the b and the m the y-intercept and the slope so if they've given you this equation that equation you're going to know what the m is and you're going to know what b is you're going to know what m is and you're going to know what b is so these numbers are just numbers these letters are just numbers so in here that's a number that's a number that's a number that's a number and at this point x1 is equal to x2 so they're also both the same x's okay so what you can do is just isolate the x. Take a screen cap of this. We're going to do that question that you just brought up on screen, okay? So we're going to deal with the problem you have. Okay. So keeping that visual in mind, and by the way, there's one other thing I want to show you. There is three things that can happen when you're trying to solve a system of equations, which is what that question is asking you. So there's basically three things that can happen when you're trying to solve a system of linear equations. System of linear equations means you have two or more lines and you're trying to find out where they cross, right? One of them is if the lines cross each other, there'll be a solution. Another one is they may be parallel where there's no solution or it may be the same system it may be the same line and there's infinite number of solutions so when you're trying to solve this one you're going to get an x and a y you will get an answer for this one there is no solution and for this one there's an infinite number of solutions okay this one has one solution solution no solutions, infinite number of solutions. Those are the three things that can happen when, when it comes to just talking about lines, right? So I'm going to erase this. So let's write down the two equations that they gave you. What are they? 2y equals 8. That's your first equation. Let's put a 1 here. What's your second equation? x plus y is equal to 13. So whenever they give you these, give you these equations, 
you always have to keep in mind to graph a line you want to put it in terms of y equals mx plus b so you have to rearrange these to have it as y equals mx plus b so how So basically, it means you've got to get y by itself, right? So what do you need to do? Not minus. This is already minus. So plus x. So you're going to grab the x and bring it over. Plus x. Agree? So now we got 2y. What's, what's, the, what's the 2 doing to the y? It's multiplying, so it would be division. And if you're doing bed mass, do addition, subtraction first, and then multiplication and division, right? They have the same weight because you're solving now, right? So you're going the other way. Samdib, I guess they call it. I don't know, <laughs> right? So this becomes, I'm going to rearrange this because I want it to be x first and then the b plus 8. Now you still have to get y by itself, so now you divide this by 2, and you've got to divide each side by 2, right? So I'm just going to divide each, each one of these terms by 2, okay? So this is xy plus 13. So our first equation really becomes y is equal to x over 2 is 1, 1 over 2x plus 8 divided by 2 is 4. That's our first equation. So you're rusty on your algebra yes that's what happens when you don't do mathematics for a couple of years you get rusty <laughs> right the second equation they gave you was x plus y equals 13 is that correct yeah so all we got to do to get y by itself is move the x over here minus x so our second equation is really y is equal to and negative x means negative x. I'm just going to rearrange it with x being the first because you want that to be there. Plus 13. This is our second equation. Right? So graphically, let's graph these so we get a visual of what's going on. Right? The way we graph this is let's graph equation 1 first. Equation 1 says the y-intercept is 4 and the slope is 1 over 2. Equation 2 says y-intercept is 13 and the slope is negative 1 because there's always a 1 in front if there's a negative number there, right? So this becomes, let's graph equation 1. y-intercept is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And the slope is 1 over 2. Slope is rise over run. And they're both positive, right? So y, uh, the rise is 1, so you go up 1, and then over 2, 1, 2. So here's our first line, approximately, right? And our second line is, the y-intercept is 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So here's our y-intercept, and the slope is 1, negative 1, over 1, rise rise is negative now over one so one down one over right. let me move this over here so this was equation one and this is equation two and the so the right side is always negative the negative one i applied for going down the right is positive, left is negative, up is positive, down is negative. And I always and I always use the negative to go down. Okay? So what we got right now is Yeah. You can go to down to the left, but you only have one negative number here, right? If the slope is negative 1 over 1, or let's just call it here. If the slope is 
negative 1, right? Let's assume our y-intercept is still 13. This is 13, right? The slope is negative 1. We need the slope to be a fraction, rise over run. So what's negative 1 over 1, right? Now, you only have one negative here. You can use this negative to go either down, or you can use the negative like this to go left, right? Up to you. Let's put this one on here first right now. This one says negative 1 over 1. So we're going to go down 1. That's the negative taken care of. We used it up. We can't use it again, right? And then 1 here is positive, so we go right 1, right? So that's there. Let's graph it using this slope, 1 over negative 1. They're the same slope, by the way, right? So if this, if we're going to use 1 over negative 1, 1 is positive, right? So up is positive. So from here, we're going to go up 1. And then the 1 here is negative, so we're going to left 1. Left 1. You end up at the same place. It's the same line, right? But for, for me, I always use the negative for going down. I don't use it for really going left. Very seldom, very seldom. Okay, it's just, con it's just convention for me. It's because one reason I do that is whenever you have a number that's negative, let's say negative 5 over 4, you usually, when you're trying to crunch numbers, you're usually writing negative, four, negative 5 over 4. You really never put the negative with the denominator. It makes calculations a little bit more difficult. So the whole thing is you want to make things simple, right? And that's where practice in algebra comes up. There's certain things you learn to make life easier as you grow older, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so take a look at this. So graphically, the solution to this system of equations, and this could represent something in real life, and this could represent something in real life, right? This could be, I don't know, anything, right? It could be... Hey, if you travel for this long, when do you cross a path over here? If you exercise this much, how much weight do you lose, right? Like if you're increasing your exercise so much, to, it could be if you eat less food, you lose more weight. If you study more, well, hopefully your mark correlates with going up, right? So this is graphically, we got the solution. And the solution is here, right? This is the solution. That X and that Y is the answer, all right? You're okay with this? Okay, now take a look at this. This is visually appealing. We see what's going on. This line crosses this line here. That's the solution to the system of equations, which means this X and Y, if we plug it in here, it'll make this equation true. And this same X and Y, if we plug it in here, will make this equation true. This point, x and y, whatever that is, will work for this system, and it'll work for this system, right? If we go over here, if we use the x and y here, this x and y is only on this line. It's not on this line. So if we put this x and y, whatever this might be, into this equation, it doesn't work, right? It gives you a bogus answer, okay? So for us, visually, we see what's going on. But what we really need to do is find exact values of things, right? So how do we find exact values of things? What we talked about. At this point, this y is the same as that y, and that x is the same as that x. So all we have to do to solve this equation is set this y equal to this y, because they're the same y. At this point, they're the same y. Agreed? So all we do, we just set y1, I'm just going to call it y1 equal to y2. y1 equal to y2. Okay, that means I set this equal to this. So all I'm going to do is going to go half x plus 4 is equal to negative x plus 13. You're okay with this? So as soon as you do that, you, you're basically telling yourself, telling the system, you want to be at this x coordinate, at this x, at this x. We, 
we're not mixing the equations we're setting them equal to each other we want to find out when they equal each other so we're saying at this x at this point both this y and this y are the same right and at this y this y whatever this y is both this x and this x are the same so basically at this point this equation is equal to this equation they cross each other right so all we're doing we're saying okay we have two equations we have two unknowns the x and the y so what we need to do is we have to combine those two equations to end up with one equation with one unknown right if we end up with one equation with one unknown we can solve that equation so how are we going to solve that equation we're going to eliminate one of the variables or we're going to use the property that this y is equal to this y by setting them equal to each other because they are equal to each other right so all we're going to do if you want to think about it we're going to substitute this for this y so we're subbing in because it's the same y so we set this guy equal to this guy i hope that makes sense right you want me to give you an example here what if i said y is equal to 5 and w is equal to 5 right can you set y and w equal to each other because they're the same so y is equal to w that's what we're doing here we're saying y1 right does that make sense yeah it's just it's just doing things mathematically uh, translating English into mathematics right we're we're saying they're both equal that just clicked for you yeah it, just kick it down to simple anyway we'll do if something doesn't make sense let me know and we'll try to make a simplified version of it right but that's this is mm -hmm. they're both why they're both exactly they're both equal to each other so if that's the case then we can set this equal to this and right now we notice that the only variable we have here is x so all we have to do is just solve for x so the way we solve for x is I don't like fractions in my equations when I'm solving them so first thing I do I'm going to multiply this equation by 2 are you okay with that or do you want us to move things around first Yeah, do you know why I'm, um, I'm going to be doing that? Well, because 1 over 2, it gets rid of that. Actually, let's not do that, if, because that's a, it simplifies things, but for you, you don't need to know it right now. Let's do it this way. When you're trying to solve for the x, it means get the x by itself. So what you're trying to do is combine like terms, right? So you're going to grab this x, bring it over. You're okay with that? Yeah. What does it become? so what do you need to do you need to get rid of this x so you're going to go plus x and you're going to go plus x here and then i'm going to take the numbers to the other side i'm going to go minus four so right now what i have is a half not two x half x plus x is equal to 13 minus four is nine what's a half x plus x one half 1.5 x right you got a half of something plus one of something is one and a half of that thing so you got 1.5 can you see this if i write it here here let's write it here so you got 1.5 x plus 9. so how do you find out what x is divide, divide. divide by 1.5 now the way i do division you divide this side and this side but what I'm doing is just drawing a big line and dividing the whole equation by 1.5. Saves me a little bit of work, right? Or writing down anyway. So x is equal to 9 divided by 1.5. I'm just going to do this manually. 3 over 2 divided by, so it means 9 times 2 over 3. 3 goes into 9. 3 times 3 times 2 is 6. So this should be 6. Okay, you can do it with your calculator. It doesn't make a difference. So x is 6. 
You're okay with this? So this value here, let's do this in pink. So that's the X part of our answer, right? So this value here is six. This X is six, right? We need to find a Y. How do we find the Y? Let's just leave it there so it's not confusing. Yeah. So we have x is equal to 6. So we just found this value here. x is equal to 6. Right? x is equal to 6. Right? Is that approximately what it should be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sure. And we, our graph is very generic. It's like very, it's not very accurate, right? But it looks to be right, right? What do you think the y is going to be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 or 8 or something? How do we find yeah, how do we find the y now? This point. How do we find the y? We have x is equal to 6. How do we find it? What's y? No, we just found the x. To find yourself on a Cartesian coordinate system, you need the x and you need the y. You need the y associated with the x. Think of the x and the y as married. They're joined at the hips, all right? If you have an x, you got a y. If you got a y, you got an x, all right? So how do you find out what the y is? What's y equal to? What's y equal to? We've got two equations. What's y equal to at this point? One half x plus four. It's also equal to negative x plus 13, right? Yeah. So how do you find what y is? The equations tell you what to do. Just take x and plug it into here or here. You're going to get the same answer, right? You just plug it back into the equation. Does that make sense? Okay. So how do we find the y? How do we find out what the y is? We plug... 6 in here or in here doesn't make a difference let's plug it in here first this becomes i'm going to erase these guys okay we got x is equal to 6 right so we have our solution is x equals 6 right let's take the 6 and plug it in this equation and this equation just to confirm that we get the same y. We have to get the same y. If you get different y's, then you did something wrong. If we plug it in here, in equation 2, you're going to get y is equal to negative 6 plus 13. Negative 6 plus 13 is 7. So this equation, equation 2, is saying y is 7. This point here is 7. So that's 7. Right? This equation... That one, equation one, equation one is y is equal to one over two times six, because we're plugging the same six, plus four. Two goes into six, three times three plus four is seven. Equation one gives us the same seven, seven. Y is seven. Yeah, we just have to find one, but I usually, if there's a system of equations, I plug the x into both of them just to confirm as a check. To make sure you did it right yeah yeah for sure right if you're writing a test or handing an assignment you do want to get the marks right and you you do want to make sure you did it right because there's a lot of places where here you could make simple little silly mistakes and have the wrong graph or the wrong equation written down or something right so it's always good to run a little minor little detour it's not even a detour just to check just to make sure you're going you're doing the steps properly, you're getting the right answers, right? Easy? Easy. Okay, you need, you need to be very, very familiar with the Cartesian coordinate system, how to graph lines on an X, Y axis. You really need to be comfortable with that, okay? Super, super important, that's what economics is. Taking equations, taking systems, and graphing them. 
and trying to find out when you're going to be. And one of the one of the best examples. Can I erase this? You sure? You got a copy? You got a screenshot? Yeah, take a screenshot of it, okay? Okay, now take a look at this. If you want to know where this comes into play for economics, so just imagine if we had, you know, if you're, we're doing economics, right? That's, this is what you're learning right now, but basically economics, they're telling you is math 10 right now, right? So just imagine if you had a company that your expenses were like this, right? That's an equation for your expenses, right? Sometimes you're paying more depending on fuel costs, electricity costs, or whatnot. Sometimes products, they're in high demand, so the prices goes up. Sometimes they come down or whatever it is, right? Let's say you started off here at time zero. This is when your company started, and this is, I don't know, a few years projection. Let's say this is a five-year projection. If someone comes up to you and said, hey, when did you become profitable? If these, this graph is your expenses and your revenue coming in, let's say you started selling stuff right off the bat day one, you wouldn't have that much revenue, right? You wouldn't have that much revenue. Revenue would be very low. But hopefully over the years, your revenue would increase, right? Now, these aren't lines. They're polynomials, right? Defined as polynomials. But basically, you could tell any potential investors, or if you're looking at this, if you're doing financial reports or something like this, you could come out and say, at this point, in this year, right? What, what year would that be? That's 5, that's 2.5, that's about 3 years. You could say, 3 years into the company's life, you became profitable, right? Because... Your profit or your revenue, this would be your revenue, your revenue increased, crossed over your expenses. Does that make sense? That's what you're doing. But right now, because they're just teaching you this stuff, they're saying, think of this as a line and think of this as a line. Where do they cross? When did you become profitable? Okay. Is that cool? Uh, does that cover, basically, get you going to where you want to be? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. We just did, what, an hour and a half of mathematics, basically. But all of it review from grade 10 that you should have known. And if you had, if you took this course that you're signed up in, is it Econ 101? What is this course? Econ 101. So just imagine if you took Econ 101 in grade 10, you would have already finished off these two assignments, yeah. right? Grade 11, you would have laughed at this assignment. You would have gone, they want me to do what? Yeah. Right? So the mathematics you learn in high school is very, very important. It applies many places. They're just beginning to teach you where it applies. They should have taught this to you in grade 10 and grade 9. Or grade 11, 10 and 11, okay? So basically, uh, send me a message when you're ready to do more. Okay. Thank you so much, Alex. Oh, you're welcome, man. <laughs> okay. Refresher, refresher. It's good, though. Now that you learn it, you're not going to forget, man. You won't. You won't. When you learn this stuff, mathematics, when you're a little older, when you have more appreciation for it, you don't tend to forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, man. <laughs> Good. So listen, uh, send me a message uh, tomorrow, next day, whenever, and uh, we'll do another session, okay? This week for sure. Okay? Good luck, brother. Bye. <laughs> Real problem. Okay, bye.